girl, this fool BK done came to the children birthday party and showed his ass after the whole fool. Now, had that been at, at my baby birthday party, my uncle and my brother and them would have been out there. They'd have shut that whole mother. <laughs> favorite favorite auntie momo and i am back for another episode review y'all we are back for loving hip-hop atlanta atl shouting this is season nine uh episode eight the kids are all right as always regular church announcements if you have not done so just yet and subscribe to my channel what you waiting on this rona because she ain't going nowhere yet so go and subscribe to my channel. Make sure your notifications is turned on and, and share me out and all of that. I appreciate you. Um, what was I going to do? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, once again, I remind y'all, a paycheck is not a passion. You can get this shirt at Be The Difference LLC Club. Look, let me tell y'all. I wore this shirt on my last review that I did. But first and foremost, I, know, I love this shirt, y'all. This shirt is just a bomb. A paycheck is not a passion, but there was a little detail that I left out. I didn't show y'all. Look at this. I love little details on clothes. Little details make the whole difference to me. Even if it's something simple like this, to see that you have your logo on the back, y'all, I left that out. I love this on the back of here. This shirt is just like the bomb quality. Like, I ain't getting paid for no promotion. Like, I really do like this shirt. Plus, another thing that I left out that I wanted to tell you guys, 10% of all of the proceeds made from the clothing donation go to Hayden's Heart. This is... I don't think y'all can see this real good. Now, when I got this shirt, she had this card in here for me as well, right? And so I've had this card sitting on my dresser literally for about a week, two weeks straight. Now, since I got it, I've had it for about a week now. And I left it on my dresser just because I thought his little face was just the cutest little Hayden. Little baby angel. And so it's been sitting on my dresser for about a week week and a half and i realized that i left this out when i told you guys about the shirt last week so i just want to let you guys know when you purchase a article of clothing from be the difference you will actually be being the difference okay you will be being the difference to a chd family a family of uh, i think it's chronic heart disease so like i said the proceeds from that are 10 percent of the clothing donation a uh, clothing um um, proceeds made go to um, Hayden's Heart. If you want to know more about this, you can go to www.haydensheart.org. That's H A Y D E N S H E A R T.org. Y'all, he is such a cute little sweet angel baby. Bless his heart. I know you up in heaven playing with my mama. My mama just having a fun long time with you, child. You so doggone cute. But look here, y'all. Tonight's episode was good. It was really, really good. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these women on here was looking a fool. Looking a fool. These men made you look a little, 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 little stupid out here in these streets. But nonetheless, hopefully y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. Y'all, I got my peach bellini on deck. <laughs> y'all already know I love me some Seagram's peach bellini, baby. This is my drink. Look here, y'all. It picked up where it left off last time with Kiyomi and Cheyenne versus each other the showdown over shooter ass they both out here looking dumb fighting over this man in the parking lot when y'all ain't the only two that he messing with anyway kiyomi you looking extra dumb because you the bottom bitch sitting over here fighting over this man and you think that you like the cool one because you okay with him being out here doing with that girl it's just too much it's just too doggone much right so they get ready to fight. Like, like I said, they, they try to fight. Security is there breaking them up. Y'all know y'all was not finna get anywhere with these big cock strong ass security guards in the doggone way. I don't even know why y'all perspire yourself and mess up your makeup and your hair knowing y'all not finna get to each other, girl. Cheyenne get in the car. She tell the scrap, come on, nigga, get your foot in the car. You gonna chase these fool down scrap like, oh no, hell no. So the no, no, no. We not finna go chase this damn. I'm not finna go on no high speed chase because you want what for what for what? Cheyenne says she 
wants some clarity. Now, I appreciate Scrap for being a good big brother. He was like, baby, what you need, what you need clarification on? He said he got him a whole nother female. He came to party with said female, then showed up here with that same female. What you ain't clear on? Your position has been filled, like he said. I appreciate Scrap for being a good big brother because he was like, look here, you're not going to continue to make yourself look stupid out here and he screams over this man when he got a whole nother female that's okay with, with him doing whatever. Like, <laughs> come on, sus. Wake up. Get your shit together. So she claims that, you know, I'm good on him. I'm good on him. I ain't even worried about him. But when I see her... It's on site. Scrap like, okay, that's good. It can be whatever site you want it to be on when you see her. But look here. Don't do it with that man. You do, you're just looking dumb out here, sis. Don't do it. So, y'all, it's the next day. The ladies are leaving the cabin. Everybody's going back home. Child Shekinah and Bambi was like, I'm going to check y'all bitches out. They both rolled back in their own separate vehicles by their dog on stuff. Because they was like, um, the ride up here was just too damn much. I'm not fitting to do it. And I don't blame their ass either, but I holler at your at the house. Carly and Sierra are on the bus, and they're talking about the whole situation with BK, about him being in the bar with his other homeboy, and they got chickens all over them and stuff. Sierra says that her and, um, what's that fool name? BK were texting back and forth all night long, and he was telling her that it was just a fan, and that he told her to move around. It wasn't nothing important. And I'm glad Carly said it, because I don't want to seem like... Yeah, you know I'm saying I was like, what fans? What you do? Do you 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 make mixtapes? <laughs> do you sell bean pies? What do you do? I ain't never heard of nothing that he do, y'all. Y'all let me know what he do out here in these streets, cause I don't know. But he claimed it was a fan. I was like, well, I mean, y'all, Kurt and Rashida go pick up little Junior Kurt from the from the prison, <laughs> and they got locked up for guns and drugs and shit. That ain't funny. Like that's some that's real nigga shit. That is really messed up. I mean, I pray for that young black man. They went and picked him up from jail. And so later on that, um, I believe it said Frost Bistro, her and Rashida, you know, little, little Kirk Jr. And then their other son, Kai. They're basically sitting down having a conversation with them. Like, look here, you niggas was already born with two strikes. You're a black, two strikes. I take that back. I'm sorry. You're a black male. So because of that, you need to be careful. I hear these screeds with these doggone police. They looking for niggas to kill left and right every day. Yes, I said it and I said what I said. Police is picking off niggas left and right out here. Y'all need to be careful. Watch your back. Don't give no reason to come after you for nothing. Like I said, you already born with two strikes against you. You are a black man. Third one is in America. God damn it, that's it. Y'all, this next scene was dumb as hell. Scrap Bambi, um, E-Money, and Breland, y'all, they all at medieval times. Now, first and foremost, I've, I've, I've been interested in going to a medieval times ever since the movie Cable Guy. I know y'all remember the movie Cable Guy when this fool was at medieval times, right? Now, I know there is one here in Texas. I think it's in Dallas or Fort Worth. I damn sure ain't in Austin. But at the same time, it's just something weird to me about all of that. I mean, don't nobody come for me because I ain't sent for you. Everybody has their own flavor and their own situation and all of that. I was at the park one day with my son. I seen about 20 grown-ass men in the middle of the park LARPing. Y'all niggas know what LARPing is? Live action role playing. These niggas is dressed up like for real knights and kings and wenches. And half horse, half men's is, is they out there play fighting with styrofoam. So I mean, I was like, wow, you know what I'm saying? You living out your kitty dream, but at the same time, it's like you niggas 30, 40 out here play fighting and sword wrestling. I mean, to each his own, it is what it is. But like I said, please don't nobody come for me because I ain't sent for you. Don't send no winches round my way. I don't want no knights jousting at my dough, none of that shit. But anyways, she goes there to give him the surprise to tell him that she is pregnant. It was really weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was just weird. Even Scrap was looking like, what the hell is going on? 
Oh, you want me to kneel down so you can knight me? Are you back in this head? Like, what you talking about? What you talking about, woman? It was just real. But it was cute to see the look on his face when it finally dawned on him that she is telling him that she was pregnant. And the way they did it. The Nelson was like, the, the, the royal queen and your highness. <laughs> the queen has an announcement for your highness that she's having a baby. I was like, what the fuck? I bet you that somebody really thought that was romantic. They was like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> yeah, so Sierra is back at her house with Tiffany Fox. Y'all remember her? She was like on the first, second episode of already um, this franchise of Love and Hip Hop, ATL, Atlanta Schulte. Anyways, Tiffany Fox is over there at the house with Sierra helping her get these little bags and stuff together for her daughter's birthday party, right? She wants to have a sweet 15. I mean, I get it though. Sweet 15, you know, I know in the Hispanic culture, that's called a quinceanera. But you know what I'm saying, black folks? <laughs> We just looking for a reason to turn up. Shit. 15, but we finna go do a big this motherfucker. So she's over there helping her get these little gift bags together or whatever, right? They get to talking about BK and her dude being at the bar with the with the bitches in their face and all that child. She says that BK was supposed to have came and brought her her house key. She don't know what's going on. But as soon as I see him, it's over. It's a wrap. That is it, girl. I am done. Next thing you know. BK come through the door because she hears the door. She's like, yo, girl, you hear my door? What is that? BK come walking in. Hey, ladies, what's up? This happened. I said, oh, so you broke in my house? You broke in with the key? I told you bring my house key. This nigga was like, baby, I can't break in with the key, girl. She's just so, girl, she was so dramatic. I was just like, girl, stop. Her and BK go back and forth and she did the one thing that irks the shit out of me because I used to have a homegirl that did that. Whenever she arguing with her dude and she turned and look at me and basically arguing, not at me, but she trying to include me in the argument against her dude. Bitch, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Even though I might have been there with you at the said question, what y'all arguing about? Bitch, I ain't got nothing to do with that. That's between you and that nigga. You know that you want to have. Like, don't put me in that. That's what Sierra was doing with Tiffany. But Tiffany was like, mm, period. Y'all, period, poo, period. She just like agrees all in it. So then Sierra like, and I know you know about Perry's birthday party. And you can't come to my baby birthday party. Get my keys. Huh, here, friend. Turn up, friend. Uh huh. Friend. I'm like, how old is we? How in that shit old is we? Like, what? The, it was just very childish. Just how on earth she is dealing with BK ass? I don't know. I would just say the case ain't nobody said it. Yeah, BK is an F boy. He is. I, I'm, I just, I, I don't see it for BK. I've never seen it for BK. I ain't gonna never sunk it. For BK and to just see his antics and his the shenanigans that he put on this episode. You and that Beijing beard. That's what Bondi Blue called it. A Beijing beard. Oh, I can't stand his ass. Child, so Kendra is having like this little bachelorette party or whatever, right? Me, me there, Rashida. Hell, all them hoes and everybody dog on there, right? It start off at the spa. They're all getting their nails and their toes and their makeup done. Sierra's in there doing everybody makeup. And um, Jock Mama, Jock's Mama and Kendra Mama both show up. Now, Kendra was like, I even invited Carly Red with her little miserable ass. And I don't blame me. Throw that up in that bitch face that you have. Man, do it. I'm just saying. But, child, a minute, Jock Mama walked in. Jock Mama started looking at Carly Red like this bitch right here. That's it, bitch. I can't stand that bitch right there. Oh, I love it to see when, when you got an old crap talking woman. I love an old shit talking old lady because that's going to be me. That will be me. I love me an old crap talking old lady. That's what I like, old bitch. I don't like that old heifer car. She get on my goddamn nerves. So, child, later on, they end up going out to this drag club. I think they said it's called Lips. It looks so fun. Like, it was drag night, you know, where we they was just performing 
It looks so doggone fun. Now, once again, you got Jock Mama there and Kendra Mama there. Kendra Mama, I'm sorry. She should have stayed her ass at home. She is a mother of the church. She is the head of Deaconess Board. She, she was not here for none of the lifestyle that was going on in that club. Baby, when I tell you she had that nose snarled and turned up the whole time. Looking at everybody like they must. She just had that look on her face. I was like, oh, she didn't stay her ass at home. But they looked like they had a good ass time. Baby, look here. Time out. Lord, forgive me. When Jock Mama got up and started dancing, look here in the previews, I could tell that they was at a drag club. Now, look here. I ain't going to even lie. From the previews when I seen last week to today, bitch, I thought that was funky Dineva. I was like, bitch, is that Dineva? Are they in Miami? That's my bitch, Dineva. I didn't know that that was Jock Mama. Baby, when I tell you she reminded me so much of Noxzema from Too Wong Fu, again, don't nobody cop from it. Because I ain't sitting for you. What I'm saying is, baby, they started playing Jock Me, Me in the trap. It's going down. She was going down. She was getting down to her, baby. But she was very much so giving me Noxzema, Too Wong Fu, Thanks for everything, love, Julie Newmar slash Funky Dineva. I thought that was my bitch Dineva up there, for real. But she got up there, she was jamming for her baby, baby. She had a good-ass time. That's the kind of old crap talking ass old woman I need to go kick it with. Baby, she was having fun. Y'all look, so Bambi and Scrappy and Cece at the house, right? Cece is Bambi mama. They all at the house chilling. Scrap said, well, you know my mom on her way over here, and she looked pissed off because she had to find out online about Bambi being pregnant. Now, Scrap did say it's his fault because as soon as he found out that Bambi was pregnant, that he was excited. So he just went on social media. He posted something, and so after that, Mama D got pissed off or whatever, right? Child Mama D comes to the house. Mama D, like, look how mad at y'all. Why the hell I have to find out on social media that I'm about to have another grandchild if Cece can find out? Why the hell can I find out? Cece, like, why? Well, how you know I know? She was like, well, you know about it, don't you? She was like, yeah, I know. Well, that's how I know you know. Like, Mama D was not having it. Child, Mama D said, you know what? Since she want to open your mouth, Cece, let me just go ahead and tell you this. I apologize for giving you a regular human obituary. If I'd have known that you walk on all fours, bitch, I'd have had you set up at the pet cemetery. I died. I hunched over in my chair, bitch, and I died when she said that. That was funny as hell. I'm sorry. I said, Mama, <laughs> Mama D ain't no damn good, but she got them comebacks for her goddamn ass. But you know what? She does end up apologizing to Bambi because Bambi was like, look, at Scrap had to break it down to Mama D. He was like, look, at she already had to bury her father. And now you doing this shit with her mama. You placing her picture on the obituary. That cut deep. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't do that. So I was proud of Mama D because she does apologize. But girl, when she told her ass, if I'd have known you was walking on all fours, I'd have set you up a <laughs> I got to hold that. I got to keep that in my back pocket for when I got to tell somebody that. But, child, I forgot that, yes, after she told Cece that, Cece said, oh, bitch, it's okay, because look here. I got a voodoo doll for your ass. She started poking it in the back. Bitch, you feel that? <laughs> Both of their ass is too old. They too old. They too old for this shit. Mama D, it's good. Mama D, you ought to know goddamn better. But, baby, I'm sorry. When she told her ass she set up in a goddamn pet cemetery, that shit took me out. It took me out. We had Paris' 15th birthday party, whatever, right? It was super cute. It was like a Paris theme. Everything was all pink, black, and white. It was real, real cute, whatever, right? Shooter ends up showing up there. Now, she kind of being messy because she kind of was sitting down at the table with, like, uh, it was Tokyo Vanity over there, Bambi, and Rashida. Sienna's over here talking with Shooter. You got Shekinah over here being mixed, talking about, oh, they so cute together. Shooter, why you do that girl like that? That girl love you so damn much. Y'all so cute together. See her sitting up there looking like a goddamn Barbie doll. Just being messy, how she being messy. Goddamn Shooter like, look here, I plead the fifth. I already got enough shit going on with Kiyomi. I don't want nothing to do with this shit here. You hear me? I don't want nothing to do with this. So, y'all, they end up getting this damn girl, Paris, her daughter, a brand new car for her 15th birthday. Now, first of all, just me as a mama, you're bad. You don't deserve shit. You in school fighting. And like I said, word on the curb is it ain't necessarily 
the other girl's fault why everything happened to you while her mama had to come in there and jump on your ass because you was supposed, supposedly out here bullying using your weight on these little ass girls. If it was me, oh no, y'all should have got her ass a segue. I, I would like a segue. Get her ass a goddamn hover around a hoverboard or something but a brand new car, a brand new car? No, it's Rona out here anyway. Where you gonna go? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. They give her a little badass a car. Like I said, e e e I, I, she don't need it. And then not only that, when she got the car, it was the first time I seen her ass smile. She don't never smile. She always look, I understand she's a teenager. She's going through shit, but she like a big ass Debo little girl. I'm, I don't know about it. Come for me. Like I said, I got caught you. What I'm saying is a girl like a big ass Debo. She do. She don't smile. She don't look friendly. She don't look approachable. The bitch don't look whimsical. Like she just looks mean as hell. I don't mean to call her a little bitch, but y'all know what I mean. I don't mean to call her that, but y'all know what I mean though, right? So they give her her little car or whatever. Child, next thing you know, BK shows up. He says he shows up bearing gifts. He ends up giving Paris these two carat diamond gold earrings, I mean diamond earrings, very cute earrings, super cute earrings. Then he gives this gift to Sierra. Sierra's like, look here, if this is supposed to be some little gift that she gonna give me, thinking that she gonna give me back, it ain't that type of party or nothing like that. You can tell she was trying to show out on the cool because she didn't really know what the hell was going on. Because Tokyo Vanity and Bambi and Rashid and all them was out there was like, sir, get your gift, sir, get your gift. She like... Don't think you finna give me back, BK. It ain't that type of party. BK said, nah, baby, look in there. Let me show you what it is. Girl, she opens it up, and it's a condom. She like, a condom? What I need a condom for? Child, he like, look here. Go ahead. Show. Look look what else is in there. This fool said him and Sierra exchanged passcodes to each other's phone. He went through her phone, seeing that she been texting and DMing two, three different niggas. Talking about you miss me, you love me, Kiki, do you love me, are you riding, say you never leave me. One of them being her baby daddy, shooter. And so, I'm just going to say this, because you know, I'm an equal employer, opportunist, and all of that. You steady on this nigga BK talking about the dirty dog nasty shit that he doing. Even if you ain't, even if you ain't slept with none of these niggas, you still doing some download dirty shit too. That's all I'm saying. One don't trump the other. That's all I'm saying. Now, Sierra does say maybe she might have slipped up and DM'd once or twice or maybe three times a couple of guys, but that's only because BK was out on his BS. So. That don't make it right. And at the very most, bitch, don't get caught. That's all I'm saying. I ain't condoning nothing. But what I am saying, if you're going to be sneaking and deaking and sneaking, know how to do that shit, and bitch, don't get caught. That's all I'm saying. Child, next thing you know, Shikana and Tokyo try to step in and take off for Sierra. You know what I'm saying? Tokyo, with her ratchet ass, throws her damn pocketbook at BK. BK picks up the pocketbook and chunks it right back at her ass. I mean, hey, you threw it at me, bitch. I'm throwing it back. Then everybody mad. They call him all kind of bitches, which he is. I've said that already. I don't like BK. Don't like nothing about him. But y'all, the episode ends from there with um, BK <laughs> pulling a whole female move, doing a whole crazy hot mess <laughs> shit that he did. But then again, like I said, I said that. Go look on their dog on social medias right now. They still together. I don't feel bad for these fools. No, I don't. No, I don't. Look here. If it was anything that I missed, y'all already know. Drop it down below and let me know. Please, y'all, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. Elbow bump. Bam.